about that in a moment. Yes, but do send in your questions. Have we had some in already, Claire? Yes, we have. Actually, we had a really interesting one, which I think is your bag, because you did the video on that, um, about heat waves. Heat yes. waves, yes. Um, yes. Ivan Lee, thank you very much for sending your message on YouTube. What temperature numbers in terms of Celsius can be categorised as a heat wave? That varies, doesn't it, depending where yeah, you are. Yeah, it depends on where you are. There's a scale, a number that you have to hit depending on where you are, and it has to reach that temperature for three consecutive days for it to be classed as a heat wave. There's a video explainer on our YouTube channel, so you can go and find out there. But it's 28 in the London area, and it's 25 across much of Scotland, Northern Ireland, uh, most of Wales, and parts of Northern England too. And it varies then across the Midlands, yeah. 26, 27. But it's between 28 and 25, depending depending on where you live, and it has to reach those temperatures for three consecutive days for it to be a heat wave, mm. new UK definition this year. Yeah. Uh, speaking of heat waves, well, we've had some hot weather. We really have. July, yeah. but it's not all about the heat, no, is it, it so is. far this summer? This, what's this chart showing? Right, is... okay, so we're just looking back at the last two months of weather, and in particular, rainfall, because obviously rain is in our forecast for this week. We've actually seen some pretty awful flooding, particularly across Terrible. Northern England. And this is the variation in rainfall across the UK for the first two months of the summer. So these are anomalies. So we haven't yet finished the summer. We've got another month to go. This is June and July. And by around this time, we should be up to around 66% rainfall. So if, this was, if it had been an average summer yeah. so far, it all should this be white. would be this kind of shade of, yeah, well, no, because it would be brown because we're still only 66. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for the whole of the summer. For the whole of the summer. Do you summer. know what? We were chatting about this earlier and we, we were bickering about we it. We were bickering about this. So it should be in this zone here yeah. because we're two thirds of the way through summer and we should be about 66%. So it should be in this. And a lot of the country is kind of in that Some shade, of it's a bit browner. Some of it's browner. Some of it. Pembrokeshire in particular. Mm, yeah, they only had 31% of their rainfall in July alone. So it's they're below average at the moment. But but this area is most concerning, really, isn't it? Because we had a wet June. Remember Wayne Fleet in Lincolnshire? Mm. And then July has been wet, particularly at the end of July. And some places have had over their average for their summer rainfall, basically. All right, we're still with most of August. Yeah. This, this, is, this doesn't include the August no. stats so far. So through the end of July, they've already had, well, in fact, some cases way over. Yeah, I mean, Cheshire's already 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 had 200% two, so of its rainfall just in the first two months alone. So, yes, yeah, some very wet places, some places which are above average, and some were pretty much just sitting there very nicely, picking up on those thunderstorms, that, you know, obviously the rainfall rates are going to go up significantly over the next seven days but yes it's interesting how there's been a real marked contrast in our wet weather across the UK over the last eight weeks or so. Right when we think about August often we think about holidays because yeah. um, school children are off and mm. you often think about dry hot sunny weather heading to the beach but is there a pattern that August mm. has been a bit wetter than average over recent years? Yes, well, you had a look at this, didn't you, Alex? Well, some of the stats we know about August, yeah. it is the wettest of the three months. So mm. we measure summer as June, July and August. And August is statistically over a long period, the wettest of the three across the UK as a whole, taking uh, average rainfall months. But actually, interestingly, seven, seven of the last 10 Augusts have been wetter than average. And what I found most interesting, the last time was a very dry August. So yes, three of the last 10 have been wetter than average, but uh, have been drier than average, but only by a little bit, like something between 80 and 100% of the average. But the last time there was anything reasonably dry was back in August 2003. That was very dry, only 30% of the average, but that's the only time we've been below 80% of the August mm. rainfall average in the past what, 16 years. So it does, that does seem like, when people always come up to me and say, it always rains when the school holidays mm. start, I always mm. think that people just, looking back with rose-tinted spectacles. But actually, there. there is a public there perception, is, which is, is actually right, really, Well, it does seem to be a trend, yeah. so that, that, that over mm -hmm. recent years, August does seem to have been wetter than average. So we're at nine o'clock this morning, we're at the chief forecast, so he, uh, he sort of unpicks the atmosphere, tells us what's going on, um, and something interesting happened. Normally, we start off with, say, what's happening, the jet stream level, yep. or maybe what's happening with heat as it's moving from one place to another, but this time, he talks about the analysis of August over the last decade compared yeah. with the decade before. And they, two of our sort of quite senior forecasters, very clever men actually, to be honest, had done this calculation and there was an interesting correlation. There was, wasn't there? there was. There was a fascinating mm. correlation, a fascinating graph, which you yes. can, or a map actually, which we can show here. Now, this was our chief meteorologist, Paul Gunderson. 
and also Nick Silkston, who's our guest, our first guest. Come on in, Nick, and let's describe and chat about what we're, what we're talking about here, because you did some really interesting, got a rough and ready analysis, just based on a quick chat with Paul yesterday. That's it, we were just having, uh, like, making little hypotheses between ourselves on what's been happening to August the last 10 years compared to the, the ones we remembered when we were younger. Is it rose-tinted spe spectacles, or has they actually, actually been a change, and has the recent run been very different? So, um, yeah, we were able to go online and uh, use this um, brilliant resource from, uh, from NSEP, basically our, our American can counterparts. And they allow you to go back and look at means of various parameters for the whole, whole globe, the atmosphere over previous months, average them through years, et cetera, et cetera, in the past. And this is how we came up with this graph. <laughs> and what is it, what is it showing? Because it looks pretty complicated. It looks colourful. It looks colourful, it looks it, pretty, but what is it actually showing? It, uh, so first thing to show is it's looking down on the North Pole, which is the centre okay. of the graph. And we're looking down on the entire Northern Hemisphere with the UK just on almost the six o'clock position down here underneath right. this blue blob. I'm looking at geopotential height, which is basically up in the atmosphere around about 18,000 feet. Um, we think of this as it's similar to high and low pressure you'd see at the surface. And we're looking at the difference in this last decade uh, from 2010 to 2018, in August specifically, versus a long-term average which uh, stretches back to 1969 in this analysis to see how different have the last eight or nine years actually been. So it's comparing nine years compared to the previous 50 years. Absolutely. And it's showing really quite a strong signal there, isn't there? That, that, that's, I can, we can actually do a bit of a zoom in on that. Uh, and this is the, so the UK is under this blue blob, correct? Which yeah. is suggesting what's that suggesting? Uh, it's showing? suggestive of a trough or an upper upper low close to ourselves, which means unsettled weather on the surface, showers, longer spells of rain, and not necessarily cooler. Because if you look at average temperatures, you know when it's unsettled, although daytime maxima can often be a little bit lower, nighttime minima a little higher, so it averages mm -hmm. out in between. Mm -hmm. But certainly stunts like you know the warm, sunny, settled summer days that you that I thought from a child in the summer holidays. But yeah, it's, we've, we've looked back for all the decades and it seems to be this, the last two in particular, but this last, um, since 2010, this high pressure or Greenland high has become so much more marked uh, since, well, in this period. And by result, so if you have a high and uh, say the jet stream flowing around it, around Greenland, you get a downstream stream trough mm -hmm. across the Eastern Atlantic and the UK. And this pattern seems to have more regularly than not set itself up in August since, say, around about, uh, well, certainly the last 10 years and since I was So even though you did a quick calculation this morning, you came up with this amazing sort of map showing where the unsettled weather is, where the, the settled weather is over, over pretty much almost a decade relative to a base of climate data. You then compared and contrast that with some other data, didn't you? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so we've... Summer. With help by um, Mark McCarthy, yeah. who's um, from our NCIC, so our National Climate information center and he's looked at the snao which is the summer north atlantic oscillation can you explain what the nao is first of all and how the summer nao is different of course so the, the north atlantic oscillation in winter is basically a pressure difference between iceland in the north and the azores which are islands in the central atlantic at, at subly latitudes and it looks at the pressure difference between them when it's strongly positive meaning the pressure is high uh, in the azores and low in um, in iceland you get a very, very strong westerly, or what we call zonal winds across the Atlantic, which bring you in weather fronts, strong winds, you know, the unsettled sort of conditions we look at in winter. But in summer, the storm track is shifted northwestwards, so measuring between those two points is no longer valid. So the SNAO looks at, at two different points, so it's looking between an area just to the east of Shetland mm. in the UK, and then stretching northwestwards to pick a, another point, which is to the northwest of Greenland. And that better represents the more northwestly shifted. And this is a pattern. pressure difference as well. That's and, that's an, and so it's an index with whether it's negative or positive. So when it's positive, what does, what's that indicative of? Um, yeah, great, less, um, a more mobile, more zonal atmosphere with storms uh, running through the storm track up towards Iceland, uh, Greenland, for example, um, in that region. And when it's, um, when it's negative, that's creating almost like blocks or slowly evolving patterns mm -hmm. in the atmosphere, which progress very slowly as, well, similar to what we've seen this summer, uh, or certainly, certainly recently. There's a distinct relationship there then on this graph, which is showing here the yellow line, in particular the smooth line of the yellow and the smooth line of the mm -hmm. orange, they were linked together there in, in the 90s, late 90s. And that's a relationship between the SNAO and, and rainfall, lower than average rainfall, and then, and then now the SNAO has gone negative and there's a stronger indication that the yellows there rise more So rainfall. this is a negative SNAO and that, that looks like a higher level of rainfall. Yeah, it's like a negative correlation. So 
when you've got an SNO or slowly evolving pattern, what we call a block, um, you can have good blocks, you know, hence the year-to-year -year variation, not in the smooth data, where you can end up in the warm, the warm section of the block, you know, or you could end up stuck between like cool, year. cold, yeah. yeah. Um, but even last year, August was the turn. Yeah, that's true, year, that's so, true, actually. Yeah. So yeah. it's all went downhill. So you can see here that when, when most people were growing up, we've been in a phase, if you look at the smooth SNO, uh, which well, when you were growing up here, yeah. yes. we have to go back a little bit Thank further. Thank you. Claire. Yeah, here's the zero axis. You can see it's been positive pretty much since the mid 60s through to the, well, around about sort of 2003 mm. period, which was correlated with a period of below average rainfall. But before that point, through the, you know, the 40s and 50s and early 60s, and since 2003 in particular, we've seen a negative SNA alert. Which is a, which, a positive rainfall anomaly through the months. Of, mm -hmm. I should say this is both July and right. August. What That's this nice. really shows as well is that there is a decadal variation. So we're not talking about climate change here. We're talking about variations in our climate through decades rather than years. And there really seems to be a really nice sort of undulation or, or, or pattern there. Difficult. So we, we've only got really here, you know, one one min, one max, so mm -hmm. only almost one peak. So yeah. you, you can extract anything or anything too long term from this. I, I feel that. We've just done the analysis to show the contrast basically between the yeah. many of the summer holidays that we grew up in yeah. as kids in the 80s and 90s right the last versus, few versus what's so, happened in the last So there is, there is a definite there trend is, there. Yeah, and also, I mean, my mum was born in 1947, so this extends right the way along her life cycle. So she's had some really nice wetter summers and some really nice dry summers, depending on what sort of weather you like, I suppose, really. Nick, I think this is really interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's just yeah. really interesting the way that uh, the two scientists upstairs had just sort of kind of had this idea, yourself and Paul, Gunderson just batted around a few numbers. We talked to Mark McC Dr. Mark McCarthy as well, who's been on the program and talked about the decadal variation uh, for June earlier this year as well. Mm. Just really fascinating. Thanks for coming no on. No problem at all. Thank Thanks you. Good stuff. That's lovely. Comments and questions. I think there's probably a lot coming in um, relative to that. Is this all related to the solar minimum? That's probably for another time. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look. Another question. When are the new storm names going to be announced? Well, oh, they'll be early yeah. September. All being well, early September. Okay. Yes, yes. So thanks for all your input with that. But yeah, early September. Thank you very much, Sarah Dale, yeah. for that. Dion Fitzgerald on Facebook. What is the highest temperature ever recorded in the UK? Well, that was July the 25th, wasn't it? <laughs> Just a yes. few weeks ago. Uh, in Cambridge. In Cambridge. Botanical yes. Okay. So that now beats. The, interesting, actually, going back to that August stat about the last time there was a really dry August was also the previous record, mm. uh, yes. 2003, in which we then broke uh, mm. a week and a half ago again now. It just seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Cambridge. Ha so, yes, we got that. 38.7 mm. degrees Celsius, the new record. Philip Matthew O'Malley. Thank you very much. He always meshes in, doesn't he? Does he? Anyway. Yeah, he's a, like he's a regular. He's a regular. On YouTube. Will the weather system on Friday and Saturday be a first name storm of the season or is this an ex-tropical system from the Atlantic? Well, that's interesting, actually. It is associated with weather systems, um, weather warnings coming in as well. We're going to be talking more about that at the moment. It hasn't been named, has it? No, no, no. no. And the Although new name system see... doesn't start until September no. when the new names okay. come out. As well. Will thunderstorms affect the West Midlands? Well, there's also showers around today and possibly tomorrow as well. The weather warning is actually further north, isn't it? Yes. Shall we have a look at the weather at the moment? Because uh, here's the bigger picture. UK's here. This is the jet stream and we are on the cool side and uh, the jet stream is relatively active at the moment. So that is one of the reasons why we're seeing so many heavy showers. We're going to see more wet weather to come. Let's take a look at the pressure pattern. There is a big low sitting over us. It has been for a couple of days now, but also if I just take the jet stream off, notice there's a little low out in the middle of the Atlantic here and the jet stream is going to pick that one up and really invigorate it. And it's that which will bring us some wet and windy weather on Friday and Saturday. More on that in a moment, though. Let's focus in on this low pressure system here because it is dominating things at the moment. If we do a quick zoom in and take a look at close to the centre of the low here, notice there's not many isobars because Scotland, Northern Ireland, there's not as many isobars here. So if we put the surface winds on, notice the winds are quite light in that zone, close to the area of low pressure. Whereas further south, whereas England and Wales, there is quite a breeze blowing. So anywhere around this low pressure, there are showers. Let's put the rainfall on. But the key thing about across Scotland, Northern Ireland, because the winds are lighter here, the showers are more slow moving, which means they can drop more rain because they're not moving through. So mm -hmm. that is why across Scotland and Northern Ireland, we have uh, the weather warning out for thunderstorms through the rest of today. Slow moving, heavy downpours. Now across England and Wales, there's enough of a breeze. We're kind of getting bands. And actually across the southwest, there's a, what's called a convergence line. So we're getting a zone of showers up from Bristol into northern parts of the... Uh, 
of the home counties if we put the showers on there. But the, the weather warning for today is across Scotland and Northern Ireland because of the slow moving nature of the thunderstorms here. They could drop uh, 20 millimetres of rain in an hour. 30 to 40 in uh, in two or three hours. Now let's go through the rest of the night. Let's just take that warning off. And if we, again, just focus in on Northern Scotland now, because this area of rain doesn't clear. No. So we have a warning in force pretty much through the night across Northern Scotland from Aberdeenshire up towards Inverness and across to Caithness because the rain doesn't stop. And then as the heat gets going, more heavy showers break out across Scotland tomorrow. And so we have another warning in force covering large parts of Scotland. Again, for thunderstorms tomorrow, the slow moving, he heavy downpours covering Scotland. Uh, the one that persists overnight across the north because the rain keeps going, and then another one further south when the showers get going in the afternoon. And interestingly, the, the warning zone shifts a little bit from the yeah. western side with more breeze. And yeah. also because the low pressure is now shifting oh, yes. a little bit over That's here right. as well. So we're, we're not as close to the centre yeah. of the low, so the low mm. pressure has shifted as well. And that low so, pressure is clearing, isn't it? It is gradually tracking away. We've had it for a few and actually, days. Yeah, so this is the, tomorrow afternoon. Notice how the mm. showers are actually fading across the south, the low shifting away, and that's there is, there is a brief window of something a bit drier through the middle of the week, especially yeah. on Thursday. But notice down here there is some more cloud and rain on its way in. So that covers the warnings for the next couple mm. of days. Uh, but yes, make sure you keep up to date with the weather warnings. I said there's at least there's four in force at the moment, if we, yeah, including later in the week. So make sure uh, you're across those weather warnings by going to the Mail website, downloading our app. The warnings are Vince Coombs well. is saying on Facebook, is it me or are there more, a lot more thunderstorms than normal across the north and Scotland this summer? There have been a lot. There have been there? a lot. And there have been, a, we've been, well, part of that could be with the new warning system. So mm. the new thunderstorm warning, uh, it came into force a couple of yeah. years. So now now we issue more thunderstorm warnings rather than rain for it, so it might be in the psyche mm -hmm. a bit more. But there does seem to have been a lot this year, and of course, the thing of, with thunderstorms, people in Scotland have been saying there's been a lot of warnings out, and they're not seeing the thunderstorms because they are so hit and miss. Yeah. Some places have, and there was some flooding uh, yesterday in northern Scotland uh, because of those thunderstorms, and with more downpours to come, there's a mm -hmm. potential for further flooding and certainly further travel disruption. Yeah. Um, Chloe needs rain. Hello, Vern. Hello. Thank you for watching. She says, I, I'm She's a regular, regular as well. She yes, is. Yes, she is. Yes. Stephen Vitali saying, what are the sea surface temperatures at the moment? I like to go for a dip. A dip. What's the warmest month? Warmest month tends to be around August, September time. There's a lag after the max solar radiation. It's pretty warm in early October as well. As well. In fact, I was in the sea. Seas. We were in the sea yeah. on the beach the other week. Weren't we, we were it, together it, with our I've kids. Been, I've, been on the, I've been in the sea very recently. So yes. It's nice. It's lovely. Really nice. Well, relative to... Relative to Bridlington when I was... <laughs> my mum and dad <laughs> wrong with Bridlington? The scene yeah, that exactly. Was, that was Learn so how I, to swim, son. I think anything's yeah. warm. Now... Um, Things that like warm weather. Warm weather, not just me and Alex. Uh, <laughs> and not too hot, though. We like we have a threshold. <laughs> but do these butterflies have a threshold? Do you know your butterflies? Do you know your the blue from the nice speckled orangey red ones? Here's four butterflies here. Can you name all four of them? They're all indigenous to UK, to the British Isles. Um, in fact, one of them is a migratory, and I, I'm just throwing something out there for you. Alex, do you know what these are this called? This is the blue furry one. Yes, it is. Uh, one of them's got to be, one of them's an admiral, is it? Or, yes, there's not a peacock on there, I know that one. One of them's, or, and one of them might be a tortoise shell. Right, okay. I, I don't know, send it, what do you think they are? If you know, put in your comments, yeah. what do you think these butterflies are? Right. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever seen one of those. No, I think this is a rare one actually, and we we do know a man who can. Right, that's name good. all of them. This is good. This is good. So Grey Madge, he's been with us before. We've had Madge's moles, Madge's midges. This is Madge's moths. It's an item we like to sometimes resurrect. Doesn't, doesn't work with butterflies. Oh, Matthew moths. They're related. They're cousins, are they? They're like you know day Let's rather than night. Let's find out. Graham is chair of our biodiversity group here at the Met Office. Come on in, he's Graham. Our Come on in, senior Graham. press officer as well and knows all about these beautiful oh, they they are insects aren't they called insects they are all insects yeah they are aren't they Excellent. fantastic yeah. i think many people would be surprised that we have such beautiful jewels like the common blue here common ah, blue common well blue. done did anyone get that yes never seen a blue butterfly before add tunes well you have now and what's this one up here this is a small tortoise shell mm -hmm. a species that should be familiar to everyone but sadly this butterfly is declining quite rapidly oh. um, nothing i don't think to do with the weather or climate it seems to be parasitized oh, by really? um, yeah. uh, a parasite uh, and that species is declining mm. quite rapidly and sadly I've only seen a handful of these this year mm. whereas the real talking point of is course are, are the two on the right. Now this one, it, we were discussing this earlier, this is a painted lady 
and they're migratory as well. So they travel thousands of miles, which is amazing for such a tiny little flying thing. It has an thing. absolutely fantastic life cycle. So it comes all the way up from the Sahara. And obviously this summer, we've all experienced that heat wave with that air mass coming up from the Sahara. And those will have been the very winds that will have brought an influx of painted ladies mm. to our shore. Um, Butterfly Conservation, who kindly provided these pictures, uh, told me yesterday that on one or two days there were 30,000 records of painted lady butterflies. Wow. And that will be the tip of the iceberg. There wow. will be many, many more than that. The reason why we're talking about this today is because the weather is ever changing here in the UK. Butterflies thrive in high temperatures in heat don't they but we have had a change there's been a change from that heat it's still very sweaty particularly in this studio today but it, we've had a real change from dry weather and very sunny weather to wet weather how do delicate species cope with such a change in the weather where we're seeing one extreme and then another particularly this one down here Delicate is exactly mm. the right word. These insects require exacting conditions in order to thrive. So this species is the mountain ringlet. Right. It's only found in the UK in the Lake District and the Highlands of Scotland. Occurs above 350 metres. So it's a real Arctic alpine specialist. The next place you see it would be northern Scandinavia. So it's, it's pretty much always been on the edge in the UK. But of course, with climate change and conditions getting warmer, mm. it's gradually being pushed uphill. And butterfly conservation are doing some research to try and tease out the differences between whether it's habitat related or whether it's climate or both. Mm. But at the moment, climate change is a strong contender for the gradual decline of this lovely butterfly. So when we, we've seen thunderstorms this week, we've seen a lot of rain across places such as Lancashire, Cheshire, Derbyshire. That really scuppers the, 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 the cycle of the butterfly, particularly when it's mating and, and producing young. These are very fragile insects, so they can't really tolerate uh, heavy shower conditions. Prolonged wet weather uh, is known to be bad for them. But on, on, the, on the opposite side, we know that hot summers uh, are quite good generally for butterflies. And thankfully, the, the common blue has been uh, reported as having a very good season this year, um, which is great because it's a butterfly that has generally been declining. So any bounce back in its number is really welcome. But if you, but if you cross towards France, they obviously have more species of butterfly because they get more hot weather, weather in the summer. Is that correct? Indeed. Indeed, if you take the ferry across to northern France, we have about 60 species of butterfly in the UK. In northern France, you could add another 30 or so to that list. So it just shows you how the climate in the UK is a little bit restricting for some species. And potentially, if these uh, winged jewels were able to cross the channel, then potentially there could be more suitable habitat and climate for them here. And obviously, we're talking about climate change and the projections particularly with the UK climate, as temperatures continue to rise, we might see a more diverse sort of set of species of butterfly. Indeed, and we're already seeing that with some species in the UK. So some species are doing quite well. The speckled wood butterfly, for example, quite a familiar species along hedgerows and copses. Um, it's a species which is gradually moving much further north. So that, again, is another indicator yeah. that climate change could have a uh, an impact on these lovely species. I think they're beautiful. It's always lovely to see a butterfly in your garden. It, it is. And can people get involved uh, at the moment with a... There is a survey going on at the moment. Our friends at Butterfly Conservation are running the big butterfly count. And anybody between now and the 11th of August, if they're seeing butterflies in their garden or on their local walk, then please let them know because it helps us understand more about how our butterflies are doing. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, thank Mr. You. Madge, thank again. Thank Madge's you very much. <laughs> thank you. For you. He'll be back. He always is. He's the voice of the podcast as well. Uh, you'll be hearing him on that over the next few weeks. Thanks very thank much. Thank you very much, Graham. That's uh, absolutely fascinating stuff. Any more questions? Coming yeah. Out, Claire? Okay. Uh, Cloverfield 911 on YouTube. Are you two married to each other? No, but I have known him for 30 years. Um, we worked together long, many, many years ago. Yes, it is. Yes. Apparently okay. so. Uh, uh, another question. My son's school has just let 180 butterflies go, looking for them from caterpillar to butterfly. Oh, that's lovely, isn't that? Charlotte Penn from Facebook. We all love a butterfly, don't we? Um, and a lot of you um, sending messages in saying, yes, we know. We know exactly what those butterflies, oh. butterflies are. Doing much better than perhaps we did. Um, and what's happening this Saturday? Well, that's a, a key question, isn't it, Alex? I know some friends of mine are going camping. Oh. Mm. 
Some I people, just, some people yeah. I know are going to West Wales and it might not be the greatest time no. going to West Wales. Before uh, that though, Before then. that though, let's look, yeah. let's depress us even more by thinking about autumn. <laughs> shall we? Yes. Uh, but we are in need of, uh, well, uh, an image for our app. Yes. So every season we change the image on the Met Office app. If you've downloaded the app, you'll know about this. If you haven't, why not? It's a great app. You can follow the rainfall on yes. it. You can uh, see your forecast for where you are for several you can days watch Aiden. Aiden's on it a lot, isn't he? Aiden is on it yeah. a lot. Um, so yes, every season, uh, every meteorological season, we change the image on the app. There's a beautiful picture across uh, summer skies and the mm -hmm. beach on there at the moment, but we want to change it, so we, we need a new picture for autumn, and we would like your input. So we've been asking for photos. We've had a lot of photos, don't need any more, but we want your opinion on, on some of these beautiful pictures that we can show on our app. Uh, we've got eight here to show you. These aren't necessarily the final eight, but they're just some fine examples. Obviously, the trees changing colour absolutely gorgeous in autumn beautiful lighthouse there these steps seem pretty popular number seven these are the people who took the photos mm. uh, so yes we'd like you to be involved uh, just reply in the comments now about which one is your favourite if you want more time to study them and have a look if you uh, go to our Facebook page then they'll be posted up there today or we have been tweeting about them a lot as well so if you follow can us, you just go back to the again. first four yes, again because I, I think that's um, which one's your favourite yeah this one. can we go full frame that's it just have a look at the top there they're the handles at the top thank you very much they're absolutely beautiful so tranquil I where that one is it might look at that bridge across the river that looks river like there. could be Holmes Chapel mm -hmm. maybe good not knowledge. I don't know good knowledge that is a Canada goose you not are joking swan. me not <laughs> that's beautiful uh, really is a conversation with Graham about Graham that knows everything. Confirmed that and can we just have a look at the next four please Mr uh, Deacon yes we can there, there we, go. we go see that is amazing that looks like it could be mid uh, you know the that uh, says autumn to me yes that one. it does uh, yeah. But, you know, New England's colours. Obviously, a bit, you like a bit of cloud on it as well, don't you? That it's looks nice. like Hope Valley. I don't know. I don't know. It's not a, that, this is not a quiz, is it's it? It's not a quiz. No. It's not a quiz. Well, thank but you, you can so input. much yes, thank for you so all much your pictures. Photos. And always, if you follow us on social media, we're all, every season we need a new yeah. picture. So, uh, and we do it in advance. So you can't take one and then send it in. So we need, we'll be needing your winter photos mm. uh, in, in three months or so. So just bear that in mind. And we do love seeing your photos. Thank in you fact, the Met Office weather app will be very handy this weekend. Because particularly if you are enjoying any outdoor activities... Um, there's going to be a lot of weather. It's changing very quickly as well. It's not just one batch of heavy, heavy rain. That's clearing through some strong winds, thunderstorms. The weather is very mobile and quite inclement as well, isn't it, Alex? It is, yes. Let's take a look at the big picture for the weather. This is Friday and into the weekend. Uh, we talked about the jet stream earlier. Notice earlier it was kind of coming across fairly flat across the Atlantic, mm. wasn't it? But just a subtle shift. There's more of a dip there. We call this a trough. And in here, in the base of troughs, that's an area where low pressure systems develop, particularly here, that left exit and that's exactly what's happening through the course of the weekend so let's put the pressure chart on this is not the low that's across us at the moment this is a brand new low pressure system and this one is packing a punch now if we zoom in there that's the uh, that's the jet stream still on there but let's put the surface winds on because they're particularly lively around the southern flank of this low and let's go through time now through Friday and watch as that low pressure system just comes in and sits across the country during Friday and it doesn't really shift very far as we go into Saturday as well. So there's two elements to this. Yes, it's going to get very windy across the south, particularly so on Saturday. But let's just uh, let's just rewind, put the rainfall on and uh, talk about that, first of all, because that as it moves in, as those weather fronts move in on. F this is Thursday night. Look at that heavy rain there across the south, the brighter colours across Wales, southwest England. This is uh, sorry, Thursday night into Friday. Let's run through the sequence and you can just see that heavy rain through the early hours of Friday, crossing most of England and Wales. As we've already seen, mm. there's, it's all very, the ground's saturated because of all that heavy rain through the early part uh, of the summer across parts of Wales and the Midlands and Northern England especially. And then that band of rain continues to track northwards. So we do have a warning in force. First of all, this is a uh, rainfall warning for Friday, covering large chunk of England and Wales. We're expecting that rain to be particularly heavy at first on Friday. The band of rain moves through, but then showers follow on. I think also um, what Laura, our Deputy Chief, was saying this morning, that the band will move quite quickly, but embedded within it will be some very heavy bursts yeah. of rain. So expect some heavy rain, but it will clear, won't it? Yes, yes. And it's, it's going to be the hills as well. So yeah. the mountains of South Wales, in southwest England are going to see some of, the, some of the heaviest downpours. Let's move on from that uh, and talk about the winds. Let's put the winds mm. back on the surface winds around that low pressure system, because as we go through Friday night and into Saturday, look at the squeeze and the oh. isobars there. So it's down. 
down here, the southern flank of the low, where the winds are going to be particularly strong, unusually strong for this time of year. There's a lot going on at the weekend. Boardmasters Festival, uh, the Bristol Balloon Festival as well. So this isn't good news. Yeah. So the next warning that we have, this is Saturday's warning of winds across say, a good part of, uh, of good part of England and Wales on the southern flank. Now, this system is developing. This is uh, four days away. So it could be further north, it could be further south, it could be more intense, it could be less intense. There is some uncertainty, there's some to play for with these low pressure systems as they come in, as is normal. So these warning areas may change, but we're flagging them at the moment as that the potential for some disruption with those kind of winds at this time of year, the, the trees are still in full leaf. Obviously there's a lot of events going on as well. So just be aware, stay up to date with the weather warnings. And high waves as well, real fetch. So yes, there'll be, oh yeah, well I was talking to um, Kat, uh, who's a big surfer, surf expert here in the Met Office, and she's not going to Boardmasters, but no. she was saying, because I, I was looking at thinking, oh, it's going to be great for Boardmasters, the surf will be amazing, but it's, it's going to be too, the winds yeah. will be too strong, it's going to be quite mm -hmm. dangerous, it's going to be challenging, was the word she used, mm -hmm. uh, even for the professionals at Boardmasters as well, so just, uh, <laughs> just bear that in mind as well. Let's. So that's Saturday. Yes, let's have a quick look forward, because the load does clear away. Yeah. It doesn't shift too far, does it? It's still sitting by. There's still going to be a lot of showers. There's still some gusty winds here on mm. Sunday coming in from the north, and there's still weather fronts around. So it's it's shower. It's not really settling down. There's perhaps uh, something a bit dry. There's an area of high pressure out here which may edge in very briefly at the early part of next week. But that's. Uh, that's kind of it, really. And a lot of people are asking, is when is this going to end? But the weather does look quite mobile and unsettled through next week as yeah, well. Next the showers week. will be in the forecast yet again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If not longer spells of mm. rain. Obviously, we'll have more on that in the 10-day trend. Uh, I'll be doing that tomorrow, so we'll have more of the details uh, for that going into next week. So maybe something a bit dry and bright of the early part of next yeah. week, but it doesn't look like it's going to last too long. Any more questions? Well, Andrew in? Baldock saying, is it going to be drier for the 27th, 28th of this month? It's my birthday, and it's also the end of the bank holiday, isn't it, as well? Yes. Around that time. Around the 27th time. is Tuesday, I think. Happy birthday, obviously, for the end of August. You'll have a wonderful day, whatever the weather. Wonderful day, whatever the weather. That's a, that's a good weatherman sort of out there. Uh, where's the summer gone? Ollie Thorley on Facebook. Well, it hasn't gone. It's still warm. It's warm rain. It's just <laughs> not sunny, is it? And, but we do like, in this country, our weather comes from so many different corners. Doesn't it? It's yeah, the jet streams just drive driven yeah. south, come south, and that's what's perpetuating these low pressure systems. See where summer is across the Mediterranean. Yes. Yeah, anyone going to the Mediterranean at the moment, apart from a few showers, maybe mm. around the Balkans, it's generally dry, hot, and sunny. It is beautiful across the Mediterranean. Well, beautiful if you like it, dry, hot, and sunny. Not so, everywhere. and there's lots of other questions. We'll have a look at those, and we'll talk about some of those next week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Please, please do keep coming. Bring, keep your questions coming in even if you're watching this not live uh, we'll try and go through them we'll try and answer some next week well. as well but make sure you're following us for the very latest on those weather warnings uh, particularly so on, on twitter and as i said download the app if you haven't got it because the warnings are on there yeah. as well uh, go to our youtube channel if you're not on it already subscribe subscribe to our sister channel as well all kinds of fascinating videos on there and we're always open to suggestions what do you Absolutely. want us to talk about here mm -hmm. on the weather studio live uh, big thanks to our guests and a big thanks to dan and Dean a lot of people are on holiday at the moment and Dan and Dean have set this whole thing up today and they haven't had a lot of experience they've been working very hard this morning and uh, touch wood it's gone pretty, pretty well. well so a big yeah. thanks to Dan and Dean big thanks mm -hmm. to George doing the questions once more is that everyone I think so thanks. thank you Alex oh, thank you no, no thank, thank you, you for watching much. really really uh, yeah. appreciate <laughs> your time watching this show and we will be back next week same time Tuesday 1 p.m see you then <laughs>